Well, recently NASA received a call from the Sheriff's Department in Nacogdoches, Texas, spotting a large metallic object on the shores of Lake Nacogdoches. So we asked them for a picture. They sent the best photographic evidence they had. Uh, we reviewed it. We have a great team here of engineers at the Space Center. We reviewed the photographs, confirmed it is indeed a piece of Columbia. So now we're formulating a plan of how to go extract the piece from its current location, do it in a safe manner, preserving the integrity of the piece, and bring her home. The piece that was recovered was a cryogenic tank from the PRSD Power Reactant Storage and Distribution System. As you can see on this model, we have the Power Reactant Storage Distribution is consists of a series of, on Columbia's case, 18 tanks. We had a series of 10 tanks in the mid-body part of the vehicle, and then we also had a pallet, which we call the EDO pallet, the Extended Duration Orbiter pallet, which consisted of additional eight tanks in the rear of the cargo bay of the shuttle. And that allowed us to stay on orbit longer. STS-107 was a long-duration mission, so that pallet allowed us to stay on longer on orbit operations, and it's one of those tanks. We get many calls every single year. Um, a majority of the calls do not turn out to be actual components of Columbia. Uh, we really appreciate the citizens that take the time to call us, um, and we take each call very seriously. We ask for photographs. Um, we'll get those photographs, we'll analyze them with the teams and the experts in those systems. Um, if it's determined to be a piece of Columbia or likely to be a piece of Columbia, um, we'll actually have the piece sent in for further study. And occasionally, on average, about once a month, we get a phone call. Well, our current plan is to bring it back to KSE. However, it's going to be a little difficult in this case. Um, in this case, it's resting on the shoreline, the new shoreline of Lake Nacogdoches. And with the water receding, the ground around it is very soft, as you can imagine. So we have to be a little innovative and creative how we're going to go actually get the piece. Um, it's not accessible by vehicles at this current time with the current soil conditions. So we have to be a little creative and get out there and get the piece. We also want to preserve the integrity of the piece. So we're going to be very careful how we extract it, clean it up and remove it, and then transport it back to Kennedy Space Center. It's not hazardous at all. Our primary concern is the possibility of exposed sharp metal. So we certainly don't want anybody approaching it. Um, the local law authorities are, are watching over the tank for us and we don't want anybody to get hurt, but there's no hazardous commodities um, on board the tank. Well, we recovered approximately 40% of the vehicle, which is a very large percentage given the upper atmospheric dynamics of the accident. Um, so we do have a large percentage of the vehicle. However, it's really hard to estimate how much is left in the field, um, and pieces do continually to come in. Well, we make a very strong effort to recover all of Columbia ever since the accident. Uh, we have a repository of over 84,000 pieces of Columbia that are housed in the Vehicle Assembly Building. Uh, they're part of a very extensive loan program, so education facilities and researchers around the country can request pieces for loan and use those pieces to continue research for uh, more stronger spacecraft for future operations and also as an educational platform for students to learn about failure analysis, science engineering, and physics in the upper atmosphere. So much like the 107 mission was a mission of research, uh, we like to continue the honor and legacy of the 107 crew and continue that research mission on into the future.